how are you on this gorgeous Sunday morning? Okay, <laughs> hopefully some of you will find me here because I normally go on Instagram and tell everybody I'm about to go live and I didn't do that today because I didn't want to be late for you. So it's gonna be up to you to ask me whatever questions you wanna ask me. And um, if I don't see anybody come on here, okay, it's been 30 seconds and I still don't see anyone come on here. Ah, Vios is here, Vios remembered. I was just saying, I didn't tell anyone. Um, usually I go on Instagram and tell everyone I'm going live and I didn't today, so I wondered if anyone was gonna show up. <laughs> so nice to see you this morning. Um, hi, Lily. Those are my diehards, Lily and Vios. Good morning, how are you? If you have any questions for me, you can go ahead and ask me. I'm trying to look up and look down at the same time. It's not funny to see if there's any questions. Oh, are you joining me? Okay. <laughs> so I'm looking for, I'm trying to think of a topic. Normally I have this done in advance, but there was a lot of things going on this morning. Yeah. You got your kitty cats. That's right. Okay. Okay. So I don't feel as prepared as I usually am. Okay. Oh, Dustin is here. Welcome. Sorry, I hope I didn't miss anyone as I was looking down. So, um, do I like capybaras? I don't even know what that is. What is that? <laughs> Let me know. So, I saw this quote the other day. Bring me another salad and I expect you... You know what, v Vios? Shortly after we shot that, and that was funny because originally in the script, it was peanuts she was allergic to, but then we didn't have any peanuts. So we found some sunflower seeds. So we substituted it for sunflower seeds and we thought, well, that's kind of even funnier because it's way more random than somebody would be allergic to sunflower seeds because a lot of people are allergic to peanuts. So you guys were talking about the Darman skit. Um, anyway, uh, oh, good for you, Lily. Uh, where she was allergic to sesame seeds. And I just found out, hey, Amos, nah. I just found out last week that I am allergic to sesame seeds. How random is that? It made me kind of sad because I love hummus. Uh, oh, Jonathan says capybara is a South American rodent, kind of a guinea pig that swims in water. Hey, little mango. Hey, John Philip. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to share this quote with you guys I found the other day uh, by James Russell Lowell. I thought this was a really interesting quote. Knowing what all experience serves to show, no mud can soil us, but the mud we throw. What does that mean to you guys? No mud can soil us, but the mud we throw. Hi, Mahum, Mahamud. I feel like I butcher your name every time I say it. I am so sorry. So what does that quote mean to you? Knowing what all experience serves to show, no mud can soil us, but the mud we throw. Okay, so here's what it means to me. Hey, Junior. Hey, Angela. Hey, AAF Gaming. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Jada. Hey, Tequila. Hi, Vios. Uh, hey, Dog. Hey, Flood Escaper. Hey, Damplin. Jada. Hey, Megan. How are you, Yusuf? I think it was Gandhi who said, if we all believed an eye for an eye. Sorry, Frank, that's, it just went by me before I could finish it. Hey, Shavendra. Hey, Unbroken Wings. How are you? Hey, Khadija. Kathera. Oh, when is my next Darman one? I, I think I told you last week I do have, um, oh, you're, oh, you're welcome. Someone said the advice I gave them worked. Okay, Megan is saying someone at school is calling me ugly. Hey, Erev. Hey, Sarah. So actually, what you just said, that someone's calling you ugly at school, plays right into this quote I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, knowing what all experience serves to show... No mud can soil us, but the mud we throw. When people call you names, whether it's ugly or anything else, that is them throwing mud on you. 
When people throw mud at us and call us all kinds of yucky names or say all kinds of mean things about us, um, that's them spoiling themselves with mud. <clears throat> and they're going to be responsible for that. Hey, Jerry. Um, the mud we throw, if someone, if someone, if we're calling people names, if we are saying nasty, mean things about them, that is us throwing mud. And that is the only mud that can soil us. So what that means for you is that no matter what anybody says about you, it can't hurt you. It can't hurt you unless you take that in, unless you absorb their words and you believe it is true. It's all about what you believe. Ha! <laughs> Jonathan says, have you heard the phrase, I'm rubber and you're glue? Now, that's, that's something I think a lot of Americans, it was a saying in, when we were kids, when someone would call us names, hey, Sergio, and make fun of us, they would call us a name like you're ugly or you're whatever. And, and we would say, I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. That's kind of like the saying about no mud can soil us except the mud we throw. The words that you put out in the world are what you're responsible for. Hey, Annalise, you're not responsible for what anybody else says or them slinging mud on you. You're only responsible for yourself and the words that you say. And guys, that's why the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So no, what are you letting in your heart? You're not responsible. Hey, Jacob for what anybody says to you, you are only responsible for what you say to others and how you react to what they're saying about you. Are you taking it in? Are you letting it sink into you? Are you letting it crush your spirit and take you down? Um, yes, Mahamud said it goes back to them. When they say bad stuff, it goes back to them. So that's, that's really the lesson to learn there. Hey, Raul. Thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, Atikish, did I say your name right? Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So Vios is quoting some of the, the Darman stuff. Okay, Megan says karma, yay. Hey, Mandy, good morning. So we were just talking about a quote that says, no mud can soil us except the mud we throw. So what is it that People are throwing mud at you by saying yucky comments. Hi, James. And our job is not to take it in, not to believe it. And, and a lot of times we can get low self-esteem or feel bad about ourselves. Hey, Neha. Um, and we take in what they're saying and we believe it as the truth, but they're not telling the truth. Yes, Mahmoud, my children are in the background. They're playing. Some, sometimes they're not awake this early yet, but they are today. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. here. Have you ever felt like you're stuck at the wrong place? Absolutely. Anyone who's ever been working a job that's not part of their calling has felt that. Um, I've written a couple poems on that topic, yes. Uh, Megan says, I'm, not, I'm trying not to listen to the boy who calls, who calls me that. Good for you, and don't. Anything that's going to bring your spirits down don't take that in. Don't absorb that into your soul and into your heart. Okay, Tequila, have a good time at church. Um, Saritha said it's 8.41 p.m. Uh, yes, yes, Vios, I do remember that. And I was, speaking of bad-mouthing, he's bringing up uh, an episode of Darman where I was bad-mouthing the girl at the gym, played by Maggie Avila. Um, she's a lovely girl. I was with uh, Ricky and I was jealous of her and saying, oh, I bet she's, I bet she has a rich man paying for everything. I bet she, she had work done and that's the only reason she looks good and, um, you know, just being mean and nasty. But it came back to haunt me, just like the quote we're talking about today. <clears throat> the mud I slung is what came back and soiled me because I was going for a job interview and I needed a job so badly, and it turns out she was the hiring boss. 
And this is after I said, oh, must be nice having a rich boyfriend pay for everything when I saw her get in her fancy car. So being rude, mean, and judging her, the mud I was slinging came back to haunt me. So good, good one bringing that up. Um, don't let others put you down, Sergio said. Life is much better when you don't care what people think. And you know what? That's a hard lesson to learn. I've been learning that for years. And a lot of times I go, oh, I'm over that. I'm not worrying about other people's opinion. Hey, DJ. And then, and then suddenly I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe what they said. And it's like, snap yourself out of it. They are not God. It's just their opinion. And their opinion doesn't make it the truth. So that's, that's basically where we have to get to, the point where we realize it's just their opinion and it is not the truth. So questions. Any questions for me? Sergio, that's very true, Jonathan says. So, Catherine, you're so beautiful and your voice is so soft. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Annalise. Um, I was just telling somebody who didn't like their voice that I hated my voice for many, many years. Um, James, I slept pretty well. Um, do you remember the video where you bragged to your friend when she was going through hard times? Yes, that was another one with Ricky. That was a good one. You know, we have to be aware of what people around us are going through. Okay, Low123 asked me what I'm afraid of. What am I scared of? Um, you know, I really do my best uh, not to be scared of things. I try not to have fear in my heart because I know fear doesn't come from God. Faith comes from God. Oops. My little one shook the, shook the camera. Hey, Ronnie. Um, someone says, where do you get all of these quotes? Um, well, a lot of times when I'm doing the lives, I'm getting the quotes from this book that's over 100 years old. And it's Poems with Power to Strengthen the Soul. And, you know, these writers back in the old days, they, they didn't have TV. So they had a lot of time to think. They didn't have cell phones, so they weren't mindlessly scrolling through what other people said. Okay, someone just said something to me, and I didn't get a chance to see it. So, you guys, if I have missed your comment, um, go ahead and put it in again. Retype it in again, because sometimes I don't always see it. Um, Tedwin, thank you. Yes, we are staying safe. Mona, have you always been a writer? It's so profound. Um, I used to write in high school when I felt like nobody liked me and I was being bullied and I had a hard time dealing with my emotions. I would, I would just sink into myself and write. And it was like my form of therapy. Um, legend or LGND is asking, how did I get my eyes? I don't know. I, I was born with them. So I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, genetics. Um, so I just would write to just cleanse my spirit and soul of all the yuck, all my bad feelings that I felt like I couldn't tell anybody. The stuff that I felt like nobody would wanna hear or nobody cared. Uh, what gives you the inspiration? Everyday circumstances. You know, I, I don't write as much now as I used to. I mean, as far as like sitting down and journaling, but when I was going through a lot emotionally, I would sit down and journal all the time, like sometimes a couple hours a day. And now, now, I, now I come talk to you instead. Hey, bro, MM. So I don't, I don't journal as much. So now I kind of talk things out with you guys. Have you ever felt that you're close to someone pulling you down instead of, I think it was rising you up. Oh, all the time. Lily said, how can you not cry anymore? I hate crying like a baby because uh, I didn't see the rest of that. Why don't you, I don't think it's, I think it's okay to cry. I think you should cry. It lets, it lets stuff out of you. It cleanses your spirit. Crying is good. It, it like helps wash away the junk and debris and it's a normal human emotion. You know, um, there was a time when I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to cry either. I didn't want to show my feelings, but it was like, you know how it, a big dam, a big wall of water is holding back the massive weight of the water. In dams, a lot of times they poke holes 
in the dams so little bits of water can come out so the whole wall doesn't break and collapse from the weight of the water. And there was a time like 13 years ago where I just wanted to cry all the time, but I didn't want anyone to know how much pain I was in. So I put this dam up and, 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 and this is when Timothy was in the neonatal intensive care unit and the doctor said he had a 90% chance of dying. And every day I would go there and I wouldn't know if he was going to be alive or dead. So I would go to church and everyone would be asking, where's your baby? Why isn't your baby out of the hospital yet? He's still there? What's going on? And this was week after week after week. And, and they would ask me and I would just, I couldn't tell the truth. I couldn't answer because then I would just, the dam would just break open. But I would go somewhere, I would go out in my car. You know, I was trying to get milk for breastfeeding and I would, I would be at work, valeting, parking cars. And I would just go into my car and get the breast pump out and try to get milk. And I would just, just cry, just let tears stream down my face because I just, it was too much. And guys, sometimes whatever you're going through is too much for you to bear. And you can't feel bad or like you're weak for crying and just letting that out. That's cleansing. And you can, you can call out to God and you can pray and you can cry. And it just, it makes you feel so much better afterwards. Okay. Someone says, can you give advice to someone who wants to be a poet? Yes. Start writing poetry. <laughs> Start writing poetry every day. Um, that's what I did. And I wrote, and, and you keep writing until you get better and read some poetry books and just keep practicing. You know, I had to write like 500 bad poems before I wrote any good poems. Sometimes it's just practice. Okay, Low123 wants to know if I consider myself, oh, what my favorite movie genre is. Sorry comedy it's got to be comedy you know life just kicks you in the shin all the time and you want to do something to alleviate that okay i've watched you on darman videos and you have such mean roles what per what personality though are you really mean or better than that <laughs> well i hope if you watch my videos on my youtube channel and you watch my lives that you can tell what kind of a person i am you know you can tell what's in a person by what comes out of their mouth. And you know, that's what scripture says. What's, what's, what goes into a man does not defile him, but what comes out of his mouth. It says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you can tell what's in a person's heart um, by what they're saying. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Angela says, you're so inspiring. Thank you. And hey, Jarell, welcome. Uh, Pan Pantagiotis asks me if I consider myself a celebrity. No, <laughs> I do not. But I've heard there's this new term um, for people who are kind of known on the internet, and it's called a micro celebrity, like an itty bitty, tiny. <laughs> I don't know if I'm considered that, but I heard that that's a thing now. So if you get recognized in public and you're kind of someone people know, you're considered a micro celebrity. Hey, Winnie, welcome. Raul says tears are healing. Okay, I didn't get to read the rest. Uh, Annalise, uh, you're such an amazing person. Your heart is good. Thank you so much. Okay, Winnie, you're gonna have to retype that in because I, I missed it. What's up, Catherine? It's Mick Clinton. Welcome. Yo, Catherine, I love your work in Dar. Man, my favorite role is when you were the Karen at the Christmas party. I, you know what? I like that role a lot, too. And I did some, you know, I tried to do something a little different than my normal mean roles for that. Um, and I, I, did, I did kind of a different voice. I did kind of a long, drawn out, ew, I'm so much better than you kind of voice. And I talked kind of slow and snooty and and I tried to make that a different character than the normal characters I play who are mean, snooty, and rude Karen. So and and I thought it felt like it was like way over the top. It felt like I was doing too much. And then when I watched it back, I was like, oh, I could have went further with that. I could have been 
even more mean. I should have, I should have done gone even further, but um, that is that is one of my favorites. I liked how it was all put together. It was on their new set. Um, the unique person is asking me, how can I lose weight? Um, gosh, I would say eat more fruits and vegetables and eat less um, junk food. Eat less food from bags. Okay. All right, I'm ready for the next question. I saw a bunch go up. Uh, her son and my son are friends, so I had to invite her. Yes, Vios is quoting the Christmas one we were just talking about. What are the compliments given to you that eventually came across as being rude or insulting? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so sometimes people give you compliments, but they're really rude and insulting, and they're like, they, what's what we call in America backhanded compliments, like they're really backhanding you. So I've had people say stuff like, you're so talented and, and you're so pretty. I just, I don't understand why you haven't made it yet. I mean, why aren't you, why are you doing these little, little small projects? Why aren't you doing big movies? Because you're so talented. So they're telling you you're talented, but they're really saying you're kind of a loser because you still haven't made it. Sorry if you hear the kids crying in the background. Uh, another backhanded compliment that I've gotten like from casting directors. Oh, you're, you're too pretty to be that fat. So are they saying I'm pretty or are they saying I'm fat? I'm quite, not quite sure. Um, so, um, oh, somebody named Sexy Girl wants to know if I'm a porn star. No, <laughs> I am the furthest thing from that. <coughs> I've never even done nudity in a movie, so no. <laughs> okay, yes, that's baby Elijah. I shouldn't call him baby anymore because he's two and a half. So yes, so someone asked, I have a two and a half year old and I have a 13 year old. It looks like the 13 year old's about to pop in and say hey. hi. Hello. Hello, sweetie pie. Oh, you're joining me in the extra chair. Okay, let's get this jewel off your face and get you looking presentable. <laughs> you got sleep in your eye. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My friend's coming over today and we're playing some video games. So he's very excited because his friend, Jaren, is coming over today to play video games. Uh, do I know Sean Harris? I think so. Was he the one? Was he the one in the Christmas one with me? Okay, so right, guys. Okay, okay. Just came. I'm staying here. Okay. So uh they're saying good morning, Timothy. Morning. Uh Omar says, Hi kid. Okay, tears are the best healing aid. At first it hurts, but then it heals wounds better than anything else. Yes, Megan says hi. So this is Timothy. Do you ever get those hate comments? How do you react to it? Um sometimes I just don't even respond. Sometimes I respond and I try to shed, shed some light or clarity if people are confused about something I did. Um, like, like for instance, you guys are talking about the roles I play where I play main character. Sometimes some kid will, you know, some 10, 11 year old, 12 year old will leave me an inbox message. How come you're so mean to that person? He didn't steal anything. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I have to write back and say, do you realize this is a script? This is a movie. It's not real life. I'm just playing a character and it's meant to, you know, teach people how to treat people. So sometimes I do let them know, but sometimes you just oh, get goodbye. mean. Okay. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes you just get mean. Do do? We're doing a lie. Your boat's right there. Sometimes you just get mean comments and you're better. It's better not to say anything at all. Okay, how are you going to, are you going to continue with Darman? Yeah, I mean, that's my plan for now. I'll keep doing videos as long as they keep having me. Um, <laughs> Elisha is shushing daddy. Shh, mommy's working. Well, you guys are interrupting me. You don't want daddy interrupting? Um, so yeah, I will keep working. I do have one scheduled in, in um, oh, you went up. I do have one scheduled um, in April. And I did shoot one this month. They haven't aired it yet. That's one with uh, a, an autistic kid. Lily says, I'm almost 5'5", five five and I'm going to be taller than my sister. Cool. You want to be taller? Hi. Um, I'm, I'm almost 5'5", five five too. 
Okay, someone says, uh, uh, good morning, Elijah, Mo Mona says. Goodbye, it's Eli time. Okay, okay. Goodbye. Okay. Um, someone asked, when is my birthday? It's October 22nd. Someone says, has someone close to you oh, ever used you in any way for their own personal gain? Oh my gosh, of course, all the time. Uh, Megan says she's 5'7", and she'll be 16 on Thursday. You guys, everyone, everyone wish Megan a happy birthday. Um, Vi Vios wants to know what I like about Mare, Mare Maloney. She, well, first of all, she's really sweet and she's very, um, she's got such a fun, um, Eli's trying to grab these chips. Are you going to make him some breakfast, Dad? I'm trying, I've got a bar. Oh, hey, go have a breakfast bar, sweetie. No. Maybe, no. maybe you can have these chips later for a snack. There you go. Um, you know what? She's super fun. She's super fun to be around, and she's like, she's like open for anything. She's. <laughs> this is why this is alive. She's open for anything. She's open to just be wild, and and you know what? She's carefree, and that's um, something not a lot of people are. Just like. She's not worried about how she comes across. She's not too concerned about other people's opinion. She's got a lot of good traits. I don't know her like super well on like good friend level because we've never like hung out outside of work, but I've worked with her enough times to know she's good stuff. <laughs> okay, my, my boy looks sad. Which one, the big one or the little one? Okay. She is beautiful. Yes, she is. Okay, so someone says, what inspires you to do what you do every day? <sighs> oh, you know what Saritha said? Can you show your husband? I, I, he never wants to be on camera, but if you look at the one I, there's two live videos I shot that are on Instagram where I snuck, I, I got a, you guys got a sneak peek of him. So watch the my last two, in, like, are they called Instagram Lives or they're called IGTV? Look at the last two videos I put up on Instagram and you will see him. Okay, remind me what the heck question I was answering because now I forgot. <laughs> okay, so um, Catherine, early on YouTube, I know because I wanted to get this in before I went to church, which will be leaving soon. Okay, how long have you been acting? I've been acting since grade school. So I've been acting, I've been acting over 20 years. I did my first play in grade school. Um, Instagram story, no, it wasn't a story. It was, <clears throat> what I did is I went live on Instagram and then I saved it too. So when you see my posts, you'll see it. Someone says, have you felt like heterochromia was a blessing? <clears throat> Honestly, for, for, my acting career, it's been, I found it more of a deterrent than a blessing. Um, I've lost roles because of it. Um, I've had casting directors not want to cast me. I've had to get colored contacts to make my eyes match. Um, even my own manager who's supposed to be promoting me was calling me a Barnum and Bailey circus freak. Oh, it, yeah. I, for me, I haven't found it to be a great blessing yet, but maybe someday I'll book some eyeglass commercial or some makeup commercial, and then I'll say, ooh, that was a big blessing. <laughs> no, but we have to embrace how God made us, you know, whatever that is. Um, just embrace it. Okay. Belated birthday wishes, Jarell. Okay, hey, Catherine, let's see. You are my favorite actor. You and Elizabeth. Oh, I love Elizabeth. She's she's so sweet. And she sings. Did you guys know Elizabeth sings? She just sent me a video uh, yesterday of her singing. I think it was called I Believe. Do you prefer to experiment with hard parts or play simple parts? I guess I don't really have a preference. I think for me, it's more about the overall script and what the message is than what my role in it is. Florence is asking me if I'm a Christian. Yes, I am. Winnie is asking, what's the most memorable and exciting thing you have ever seen in your field or industry? 
most exciting thing I have ever seen. I'm not really sure. I guess I might have to give that some thought. Nothing pops into my head immediately. Um, no, not Elizabeth Lamboy. I'm talking about the older woman with the long black hair that has some streaks of gray in it. Does anyone know her last name? It's escaping me for the moment. Um, do you have a therapy dog when your son was younger? Susan, no, I was looking into getting him a therapy dog, but it was like $30,000. And I was trying to get some, like, I don't know, some charities to, like, maybe help us out. I even applied for a TV show where they give service dogs, but we did, they didn't choose us. Um, he needs more for emotional, emotional support. Like when he throws his tantrums and stuff to, to, to calm him down, you know, autism and he's got some other stuff going on too, but, um, I think he could use, he could use that support and love and, uh, he doesn't always connect well with people socially. Um, you know, he misreads the situation or. He could be really harassing or annoying and to someone, but he thinks they're his best friend or something. It's hard. I don't know how you know he's going to handle things um, as he gets older. It's he's going through a new phase. He just turned thirteen. He's growing. He doesn't like this going through puberty stuff. Okay, what is the best quote in your opinion, Mahmoud asked me. You know, one I really like a lot. I mean, obviously there's so many good quotes and I can't say what the best quote is because it depends on what you're going through and what situation you're in. But there's a quote I heard once and I don't even know who said it, um, that said, never take advice from someone you wouldn't trade places with. So, this is applicable to all of us because how many of us take someone's advice and they're not even qualified to give you that advice? This goes way, even way back to what someone was saying earlier about someone putting you down or saying mean things about you. If that's not somebody you would wanna be, why take their advice? You know, if someone who's never done what you're attempting to do is trying to tell you all the ways it's not gonna work or it's not gonna turn out and they're trying to detour you from your dreams, I wouldn't take advice from them. Okay, so, all right, go ahead. If I'm if I haven't gotten to your whatever you said yet, go ahead and type it in. Saritha, no, I haven't had breakfast yet. Um, fan of Foxy and Link asked if I've ever acted in an in an important film. I've been in 150 films. I don't know what you mean by important. What makes a film important? Do you mean? If it's been in the movie theater, do you mean if it's touched a lot of people? Do you mean if it's been with movie stars? I'm not sure what you mean by important. Uh, Morgan said, do your eyes change colors? I have heard from someone that when I get angry, the hazel one turns kind of yellowish, but I don't know because I don't get angry all that often and if I am angry, I'm certainly not at a place where I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm angry. Probably fuming, probably being mad at someone, I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see. If ever given the opportunity, oh my gosh. James, you need to just get off here with your perverted comments. I almost read that out loud. <laughs> This is a clean channel. This is an uplifting channel. And if you haven't noticed, I'm a married lady with kids. So take your porn talk elsewhere. Okay. Uh, silent crying or fighting. What is the best mature action? Um, well, it, physical fighting, I don't think is something you need to do. I think you just need to remove yourself from that situation and get to a safe place. There is a time where if someone is attacking you, obviously you may need to protect yourself or fight back. Um, but silent crying, are you doing that? You know, I would just remove yourself from the situation where someone is trying to cause issues with you. 
And if you want to cry when you, when you leave that situation, go ahead. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, Winnie asks, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> I don't really have spare time. <laughs> I, Rob, what do I do in my spare time? Ah, okay, that's a good one. Rob says, play with the kids, read a book, write a book. That's a good one. I'll, I'll go with that answer. When I had more time, I would go, I would go like roller skating or back when I had more time, I had a gym membership and I used to like go into like dance classes. Um, but I don't feel like I have a lot of spare time lately. Megan says she sings because she's in, she enjoys it. Lily wants to look after guinea pigs. Allie asks if I have any pets. We used to have a cat, but oh, it was like one of those inside outside cats. It was wild and it loved to be outside, but it would always come home. But then one day it didn't come home and we think the coyotes got it. As we lived in an area that had a hill and coyotes would come down the hill searching for food. And we think our kitty Katza uh, may have got eaten by a coyote. Angel asks if we travel a lot. No. Well, my husband travels for work, um, but nothing's, I don't think we've gone anywhere since COVID. We've went to Minnesota once to visit our parents. All right. So let's see. Next question. Would you agree to, uh, sorry, it moved too fast. Impossible is nothing. Nothing is impossible. Do you like this quote? Yeah, that's a great quote. I believe that. Um, the Bible says nothing is impossible with God or all things are possible with God. There's two different quotes. Someone said, how should you deal with toxic parents? Oh boy, that's a rough one because that's not a situation you can just walk away from. But you know, do you feel comfortable having a conversation with your parents? You know, what, what, how are they, can you share with us some ways that they're being toxic so we can kind of hone in on more of what's happening? Um, let, let me know, um, let me know how they're being toxic, what that means to you. Okay. Do you have any advice for a 17 year old who doesn't feel ready to grow up and become an adult? Well, first of all, what is it that is it, it's probably something that's making you nervous or scaring you or holding your back, you back, or there's something that you feel like you're going to lose or have to give up when you become an adult. So this would be, I would talk to somebody about this, or if you don't know who to talk to, I would journal. I would just start writing down all the stuff about why you don't want to become an adult, why you want to stay a kid, what's working. Get to know yourself. You guys, a lot of issues you're dealing with in life would be solved quicker and with less torment if you got to know yourself better. If you got to know what made you tick if you started to think, you know, why am I feeling this way? What, what is causing me to feel this? And how come, you know, just start ask, asking yourself a lot of questions and answering them. Okay, so let's see. There's, there's this quote. Um, do you, would you agree to all fools? Uh, it went by too fast. I'm sorry. Oh, all fools, you may try to insult anyone, but all attempts insult you back. Um, well, I mean, it, it's, it's the quote we read earlier today. No mud can soil you except the mud you throw. Yeah, your insults are going to come back at you. That's, you know, what the Bible calls sowing and reaping. That's what um, the Eastern religions call karma. And never do to somebody else what you would not want done to you. That's just, just the way it is. If you die today, what will you regret not doing? Um, I think finishing all the books I started writing because I feel like I have important messages I need to get out into the world and I feel like I don't always have the time to sit down and work on them and complete them. Like that's going to be my legacy is all the books that I leave for people to learn from after I'm gone. Um, okay. They're really strict today. It doesn't go... It, a day doesn't go by when they don't get beaten. I, okay, I don't know. I don't know what that's in reference to. Where would you like to travel and what place would you like to live? Um, 
the only place I've ever really thought about it might be fun to travel to, I think Thailand would be a, a nice place to go. Um, I took my mom to Ireland in 2019. I don't think that's a place I would want to live though. Um, I would want to live somewhere warm, where it's warm all the time. I guess that's why I moved from Minnesota to California. One of the reasons anyway. Okay, the messages are coming up fast and furious and I'm not always getting, some of them are going by too fast. So what's your biggest, okay, sorry, I missed, missed it. What, okay. Hopefully seeing you soon in India. Oh, you know, I would consider going to India. Is your glass half full or half empty? Always half full. You always got to look at the bright side. You got to look at the silver lining in the cl in the clouds. Look at the silver lining. Someone asked if I've ever had a crush on a celebrity. Uh, I think when I was a teenager, there might have been some pop star or singer I had a crush on. But honestly, I couldn't even tell you what their name was anymore. That feels so long ago. Okay. Ma'am, I saw your husband in the Instagram video on the family beach. You look like a lovely couple. Aw, thank you. <laughs> you know what? He, he was kind of worried that people would think he, he you know, um, <laughs> they would see him and think that he wasn't good enough for me. Those weren't his exact words, but it was something like, they would think I wasn't the kind of guy you would end up with. But we all know it's about the heart, right? <laughs> Plus, I think he's very handsome. Hey, John, watching from the Philippines. Daggy says, when are you coming to Uganda? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Can you give advice not to be giving up to be, not giving up to be a K-pop idol? If you have a dream, you gotta go for it. And go for it right now with everything in you and all that you've got. Do your preparing, do your studying, do your practice. Put yourself out there, do whatever you need to do. Now is the best time. If you don't do it, you could live to regret it. You don't wanna get to the point where you're saying, I wish I would have done that earlier. I wish I would have done that sooner. I wish I would have done that when I was younger. So go for your dreams now. Someone said, what's the best advice you can give us during the pandemic? I would say to, to, to learn, to learn. What is it that you want to do when you get out of this? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to become, do you want to be a singer? Do you want to be, start honing and learning, hone your gifts, hone your talents, get your practice in, learn, study, get everything get ready. You know what I did during the pandemic last year when we all got locked in and all my appointments canceled and I stopped working on this TV show and going to wrestling practice and doing all this stuff. I wrote a book. Have you guys gotten poetic prescriptions for pesky problems yet? Second edition. I used my downtime to do something productive. I didn't just sit around and watch Netflix all day. So do something productive with your downtime. Do something that's gonna make a difference. When the, when the bands lift, when everything can go back to normal, do something. <clears throat> I think Winnie asked me if I'm the jealous type. I think when I was insecure about myself, I used to be. When I didn't love myself, <clears throat> and all I was doing all day long was picking out my flaws, um, I would get jealous of people, but now I don't. I think, you know, the things God has for me is for me alone and nobody can take them from me. Or is it, if you guys, did you guys get my free download of one of my books? I have a book called Poetic Prescriptions for Eternal Youth. And in that book, it's my journey from self-hate to self-love by finding out what God had to say about me. And you can get that for free by going to poeticprescriptions.com forward slash free book. And in that book, I say the things that God has for you is for you and you alone. No one can take it from you, not even Barbie's clone. So I used to be jealous um, back when I was a teenager, back when I was younger, of everyone who looked like Barbie dolls. The skinny hourglass girls with the beautiful long blonde hair and all that. And because uh, I've never been skinny. 
Um, and that used to be, that used to be important to me at a time. It's not weight, looks, all that stuff is not important to me now like it used to be. So, um, I'm not sure if I ever got jealous of material, people having material things. I, I think everyone has their own thing. Some people get jealous of fancy cars or houses. That's never been something I've cared all that much about. Okay, so back to the comments. Let's see, I love your acting, Dar Man, either the antagonist or the protagonist. Thank you, John. Uh, do you know what, okay, uh, sorry. Is there any celebrity you look f to for inspiration? <sighs> hmm. Kind of, you know, I probably could have named a lot before, but I kind of, my boss, Dar Man, he's, he's, he's quite an inspiration, I have to say. Sometimes I see him doing stuff in his stories. I'm like, wow, you know, taking time to spend time with your family, enjoying your life, doing self-care. You know, a lot of times I'm so busy taking care of everybody and trying to work on my projects that I don't take time to get enough exercise in. And then I, I see him, he's like jogging and I'm like, oh my gosh, if that guy, as busy as he is with a family, running this massive company, all these employees, if he can take time for self-care, I'm like, what is my problem? So sometimes sometimes he, I, I use him as an inspiration. I go through his stories and I get inspired. Oh, I, he's expanding and he's doing this. And so I, I, I would say my boss is one of my inspirations. Um, I'm sure, I don't know. I don't, I don't really look to like the big, 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 big celebrities that are household names as being an inspiration. Because to me, that seems unreachable, unattainable. You know, the people that have like bodyguards and it just, I can't be inspired by that because I can't relate to it. Okay, Sloth says I'm 5'8 and 150 pounds. Okay, I, I missed, uh, I think I'm overweight. Oh, no, 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 not at all. No, you're not overweight. Please don't think that. I mean, if you don't like the, I don't know, you definitely you're not overweight. But if you don't like, like how fleshy you are, I mean, you could just lift some weights or just get a little more tone, but that, you're not overweight at all. Okay, when you were a kid, what was your favorite game to play? I was a gymnast. I was in gymnastics. Funny thing, I had a dream last night that I was trying to do gymnastics again. Round off back handsprings. I was trying to do that in my dream last night. <laughs> I did it in a play a few years ago too. Did your kids appear in any Darn Man videos? My big boy has always wanted to be in them, but because of his special needs, there's never quite been a role for him. But my little one has been in three of them. So, Isaiah says, your eyes look really cool. I'm for real. Oh, thank you. Um, my little one has been in three, but I think one of them they didn't air and they reshot it. So the one about where the girl feels like nothing she prays for happens and her baby's just crying all the time. That was, that was my real baby. And then did you guys see the one with Colin where he was a, playing video games and wasn't cleaning up the house and was leaving everything half done? Elijah, my little one, was in that one too. And Secret, that was actually shot in my house. So you guys would get a sneak peek of my house if you watch that video. Actually, there's a few videos from Darman that were shot in my house before he had a studio. Okay. <clears throat> I want to take, I want to make lots of money. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, how do I control my anger? <clears throat> Again, this is getting to know yourself. First, you need to figure out what makes you angry. Do some journaling. Ask yourself a lot of questions. Figure out what makes you angry and then figure out, um, like you need to know what your trigger is. You need, in order to be able to control your anger, you need to know what makes you angry and why it makes you angry. Not until you figure out what makes you angry and why it makes you angry, will you be able to do something about it? Otherwise it might just feel like you're just blowing up for no reason or you might be blaming other people for your anger. But I just want you guys to know that other people cannot make you feel any kind of emotion. 
Something they say or do may arise, it may arise in you because of something they say or do, but they can, they're not in control of your emotions. You are. And, and it's, I feel like the greatest weakness I see in, in a lot of us these days is not having, you know, people, all they talk about is having big IQ, but I think your EQ is way more important for relating in life. So your EQ is your emotional quotient. So how emotion, how, how do you handle situations emotionally? Because that's going to get you much further in life than having a big IQ, you know, de depending on what your line of work is. Okay, what type of music do you prefer? Um, you know, in high school, I listened to country music because I like the storylines and I listened to rap, hip hop because I like to dance. Now I don't really listen to all that much music. Um, I kind of, when I drive, I kind of like listening to audiobooks and sometimes podcasts because I, I feel like I don't have enough time to read and I love to learn. So I don't listen to music all that much. Um, sometimes, <gasps> sometimes at home I have a, like, uplifting, inspiring music playing in the background. Okay. So someone says, I'm not, I'm not fleshy. I'm just not skinny, like 120 pounds. Well, why do you have to be skinny? Are you, are you a model? I don't, I don't see what, why your weight matters. Um, okay. What's your favorite video you've done with Dar Man? I love them all. I keep meaning to go back and look at the list of, I have a list of like 85 or 90 that I've been in. I feel like I need to go back and revisit them just to really see, hey Rhoda, to really see what my favorite one is because it's been a while. So I'll just say the one I always say when people ask me, and that is the one called More Hugs, Less Suicide. Um, someone asked me what other languages I speak. Um, I don't really speak any except a little tiny smidgen of Spanish I took in high school. Okay, someone said I'm really self-conscious. Am I, am I thinner than you? You're way thinner than me. You're way skinnier than me. I am only 5'5", five five and I weigh more than you. So, does it matter? Does it really matter? Okay. All right. Does Darman ever get mad? He's always smiling. <laughs> I don't know if he ever gets mad. I've never seen him mad either. Um... But, you know, there probably are some things that make him angry. You know, injustice in the world, people being treated unfairly prob probably get him angry. When people hurt other people or judge other people, that probably makes him angry. And that's probably why he does what he does. You know, a lot of people find their calling in life by trying to be the solution to things that make them angry. You know, people get angry about homelessness. They, they give to homeless charities or they go out and give food to the homeless. A lot of times if you don't know what your calling is in life, you figure out what the things are that make you angry and you try to bring a solution to them. Okay. All right. I have not seen you in Darman videos lately. Me either. I'm so sad. I wish they'd, they used to call me all the time. No. <laughs> they don't call me as much anymore. The cast is growing with lots of other people. Um, but did you see the one I was in last month with the girl with the skin problems? That was a fun one. Um, yeah, the, you know, I think it's because they built that high school set. So you guys have probably seen a lot of like high school stories. So um, since I'm not a high schooler, I haven't been in any lately, but they've like put like 15 high school ones out in the last couple months. So they were, they had been writing scripts knowing that they were gonna get these sets built. And then um, once the set got built, they're like, we've got this pile of scripts about high school stories. And they just started filming those. So like the family stories where I'm usually playing the mom or whatever, it hasn't, hasn't happened yet. But I'm sure they'll keep having me back. I've, I got one coming up in April. Okay, I actually get a lot of hate because I was toxic. I realized my mistakes and apologized. I still get hate, what do I do? Okay. You know, that's common. People people will be stubborn, starry, and they won't forgive you. And But you have to just keep, 
keep being, you realized your mistakes, just keep living like the person who's realized their mistakes, living in a better way. You know, if they won't forgive you for what you've done, unfortunately, that's their loss. We, you know, that's the crazy thing about this cancel culture we're in right now is that people are now firing people or canceling their shows or not doing stuff with them because of something they did years ago. I just saw something. Somebody did something in 2011 and now we're not going to be part of your company anymore because of some tweet you did 10 years ago. Well, yeah, maybe it wasn't right that you did that tweet. Maybe it wasn't right that you said that thing, but people change. People don't stay the same. They learn, they grow, they become better, hopefully. So someone not giving you a chance because of something you did in the past that you have humbly apologized for and you have changed, you, you know what? That's on them, Starry. That's on them. You just be the person that you want to be. Be the person you wished you would have been. I was a jerk in my past. I was mean. I was nasty. I was rude because I didn't love myself. I didn't like myself. And so I was so afraid of getting hurt, so sure that no one would like me and want to be my friend that I pushed everybody away, even people who tried to be close to me because I was, I was like, I'm going to just get rid of them before they get rid of me. You know what I mean? <sighs> don't take it personal. Really don't take it personal, okay? Just be the person you wish you would be now. Yes, I read your comment. Be the person you wish you'd be now. And if they don't like it, you know what? You'll get some new friends. Have you ever been told to change something about yourself? Winnie asks. All the time, millions of times. A lot of people don't like me. But that's of no consequence to me because the people that I care about in my life, they can overlook some of my flaws. And they can see my good traits, even though I do have some bad traits. You're welcome, Starry. Okay, how would you describe your personality? Um, hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm a little bit introvert, a little bit outgoing. I'm a little bit fun. I'm a little bit serious. I'm kind of a big mix. I'm kind of a big mix of a lot of different stuff. Where you live is my dream to go see all the actors. Oh, very cool. Have you ever been told? Yes, I've been told to change stuff about myself. Um, sometimes people would tell me to change stuff I couldn't even change. Like I, back when I thought I was gonna be a, a model before I became an actor, I had this modeling agent say, oh my gosh, you're so gorgeous. You would be perfect if you were 5'10 and a redhead. Well, guess what? I could dye my hair red, but I'm not gonna grow five inches, so thanks a lot. <laughs> No, but I, you know, back when I used to be really sensitive emotionally, people would say, don't be so sensitive. Can't you take a joke? And there was a time, if you guys have read my book, Poetic Prescriptions for Eternal Youth, there's a poem in there called Butt of the Jokes. And it talks about the time where I couldn't take a joke. I would just be crying and taking everything personally and feel like I was being attacked and insulted all the time. So, okay. Well, someone asked me, what was your dream as a child? I, you know, I don't really remember my childhood all that much, but I'm sure it had something to do with entertaining and helping people. Cause I think in high school I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a nurse or a teacher. And um, I thought I'd be a nurse or a teacher or a model. And those seem like very different things, but teachers teach people, which I feel like I do, even though I'm an actor, I feel like this time with you, and a nurse, even though I'm not in the medical field, I feel like I help nurse people's emotions back to health, you know, to help them become who they want to be. And I may not be a model on a runway, but I feel like I've gotten to the place where I could be a role model to people because I can show how I've overcome life's challenges. So hopefully I'm a role model to help you overcome your challenges as well. Okay, hey, I don't know what I want to do as a job when I'm older and I'm slightly nervous. What should I do? Hedwig, what are you nervous about? Lily says, I swim 12 laps in the pool and go to the gym. You're better than I am, Lily. V 
Garrity says, I now the truth, now who I am. Sorry, I missed part of that. Who is the person that washes their hair and their face but doesn't brush their hair? Who, wh who is a person that washes their face but doesn't brush their hair? Me, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I wash my face but don't brush my hair. <laughs> is that a trick question? <laughs> sometimes I have big knots in my hair but I wash my face. I don't know, nobody's perfect. I don't know why, if you were asking that about me personally, but I can say I'm guilty of that. I don't always brush my hair, but I do wash my face. That was probably a more profound quote you were getting at that I just didn't even know. Okay, why do they think you could grow five inches? I don't know, I think it was one of those backhanded compliments, one of those, it feels like they're telling you you're pretty, but really they're saying, but you're not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's important. Do you like sushi? Um, only if vegan sushi counts because I don't eat fish. Sorry. I know a lot of people love sushi, but um, I haven't eaten meat or fish for 16 years. So, do you want to answer my question? I don't know. If I see it, I guess I'll answer it. I've been busy answering whatever questions pop up. Okay, Megan doesn't like sushi either. All right, so uh, let's see. You are my role model. Oh, thank you, Angela. Okay, uh, do you believe no matter how many how many times a snake? Sorry, somebody asked me something about a snake thing. Uh, yes, I do like sticky rice. I love mango sticky rice. That's one of my favorite desserts. <laughs> Sorry, Elijah. Catherine, be honest with me. How do you feel about black people? I just think they're regular people like everybody else. I don't think you should have different feelings of someone based on their skin tone. Actually, if you want to know how I feel, go watch my video, Should We Be Proud of Our Skin Color? Because in my opinion, our skin color is not who we are. This body we live in is just a tent that we're in on earth. The real us, the true person, is a spirit. We're a speaking spirit that is just living inside this tent. It's like the color house. If you can walk down the neighborhood and you see all these houses, you can't judge the person who lives inside the house by the color the house is painted. Oh, you know what? Check out my poem on YouTube called temporary housing. It's about that very topic, temporary housing. Our skin is our temporary house while we're on earth. It has nothing to do with who we are, who God made us to be. Oh, you, you on here eating chips on my live? <laughs> okay, we'll enjoy. I'm sure they're gonna enjoy your, this. Now it's turned into a mukbang. Is that what they're called? Muk Mukbang, mukbang, am I saying it right? Okay, do you wanna answer this question? Who is a person that washes their face but doesn't brush their hair? I don't know who, I just told you that was me. Is that a trick question? Is that a joke? I don't know. Um, Angela says you're cute. You're cute, Eli. Are you my cutie pie? We should have washed your face if I knew you are gonna be on live. Okay, uh, yes, I love sticky rice. Uh, the, is, it's the bald person that's... <laughs> so it was a joke. Okay, so he asked who's the person that... <laughs> that washes their face but doesn't brush their hair. I said it was me, but he says it's a bald person. I guess it's both of us. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Verity, you know now the truth about your parents. Okay, you were adopted, right? You, did you find out some news about your parents? That'd be interesting to find out. Yes, it was a joke. I didn't know it was a joke. I thought you were talking about me. You've seen me in some of my lives with big, big, big knots in my hair. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, good for you, Verity. Has that brought you some, some closure, some clarity? Do I like bitter gourd? Probably not. I don't like anything bitter, so I don't... I don't think I've ever had that. Okay, I am always kind to everyone in my school, but some take my kindness too far and use me and ignore me. And I, I couldn't read the rest because it went by. Oh, ignore me, but my poor heart melts and, it, and just doesn't ignore me. Please help. 
Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. You know what? You keep being kind and you keep being true, but don't let their mess get inside you. I just made that up. You keep being kind, you keep being true, but don't let their mess get inside you. You know what? You be the person that you want to be. You be the role model you want. Okay, we just have a wild animal over here now. Why are you so grumpy? Oh, oh, he's being a cow. Don't let their stuff get on you. Don't let their negative, mean comments get inside you. And don't let it, don't take it to heart and make it mean something else. Something else. Do you have something to say? Would you like to contribute to this conversation? Moo. He's learning his animals. Now he's a cow. Moo. <laughs> a cow. So don't let it get inside you. Oh, they thought you were a zombie. <laughs> don't let it get inside you, please. When someone is doing negative, just neg throwing shade, being negative, being hateful, don't take it to heart. Don't let that mean anything about you. Don't. It's never fun to be made fun of. It's never fun for people to treat you like that. But their comments aren't the truth. You keep shining. Did you guys see my latest video called Shine Anyway? Go, go watch my latest video. It came up this week. It's called Shine Anyway. You keep doing you. You keep shining no matter how much darkness they're trying to put on you. Someone asked what Eli was eating. <laughs> After his breakfast, he grabbed a bag of Doritos. Not the best breakfast choice, but he did have something healthy before that. Sometimes you can't control those little buggers. Shine anyway, Rhoda said. That's right. How would you handle it if you're longing for your mom? You've never, you only saw her a few months before you died. I kind of, I say this all the time, and I'm going to say it again. I, whenever I'm going through something emotionally, I write. I write it down, or I talk to someone. If, you, if you're not a big on writing out all your emotions, here's what I would do. Here's what I would do, Winnie. I would put a chair in front of me, and I would put a chair in front of me, and I would pretend like my mom is in that chair. And I would just start telling her everything I wished I had told her when she was on earth. I would start telling her, Mom, my life feels so empty without you in it. I wish I had gotten to know you better. I don't know what the circumstances were where we couldn't be together in life. God, I miss you and I feel like my life would be totally different if you were here. Please, please send me your love, send me a sign, show me how I can get through this life without me. God, help me fill this hole in my heart that I feel like only my mother is able to fill. You know, whatever it is you're feeling, put her in a chair right in front of you. Imagine that she's there and just pour your heart out. Tell, say every, if this may take two hours, it may take three hours, Everything that's bubbling up in your heart that feels like your heart is twisted and torn and broken, get it out. Because you know what? She can hear you. She can hear you. Pretend she's in front of you. Put that chair in front of you. If you have to put a doll there, if you have to do, if you have to print out a picture of her and put it on the head, <clears throat> tell her everything you've always wanted to tell her because she can hear you. And you know, most importantly, God can hear you. And you can ask him to heal up that hole in your heart. Ask him to be with you and just pour out everything you've wanted to say. You're going to cry. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be cathartic. You're going to feel so much better afterwards. You know, we can't bring people back from the dead. But you can get everything out of your system that you've always wanted to share with her. Please do that. Try that. Okay? Guys, I'm sorry, but I got to go. I got to get the family ready for church. And we got to get out of here. It was so nice of you to join me today. It was an honor and a privilege. And I'm really sorry if I didn't get to your question. I'm going to try to go live every Sunday for you guys. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll try to be here to answer your questions every Sunday, whenever I can. All the sisters, thanks for coming. God bless you guys. Live true, love hard, shine bright.